I'm not in a hot tub, but so okay. So in the last video by you talked about the act of creation, that book, um, and how in that book there is this idea of um, two planes of thinking intersecting. Whoa, you're falling. Two planes of thinking intersecting, and at that intersection is where new ideas form. Essentially, that is the act of creation. Um, and so I want to show you this book on flattening. And I actually just found this laying around in the library in here. But it's awesome because the whole book is about um, interleaving, essentially, um, textual forms of understanding and image-based forms of understanding. One of the uh, very first stories in the book about how um, engaging in multiple viewpoints simultaneously can lead to new thinking is um, this page, page 32, and it talks about um, ero Eratosthenes, which I can't pronounce, but okay, um, basically how people proved that the earth was round using, you know, Serene and Alexandria um, and measuring the heights of um, shadows. And it's just interesting, like, this idea of, like, you can prove that the, not only that the Earth is round, but how big it is by just observing light at two points on the surface of the Earth. Um, but that was awesome. So this is actually one of my favorite pages in the book, page 62, and I'm going to read it to you, even though I know the resolution is too low for you to really see it. Um, while comics are read sequentially like text, the entire composition is also taken in viewed allotments. Here's another name I can't pronounce. Thierry Gorison likens this organization of simultaneous images to a system or network, a connected space not reliant on chain-like sequence linearly proceeding from point to point, rather associations that stretch web-like across the page braiding fragment fragments <laughs> braiding fragments into a cohesive whole each element is thus one with everything the spatial interplay interplay of sequ sequential and simultaneous imbues comics with a dual nature both tree-like a hierarchical and rhizomatic interwoven into a single form so then obviously like it's broken up into all these different visual chunks that make a whole image and that whole idea of dual nature, um, and that whole idea of a dual nature is something that is resulting from this intersection of two um, modes of thought. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of the conversation that we were having with Goats about, you know, speech-like versus writing-like modes of thought, and how actually those are both, you know. In, both of those positions are language-like, um, and it was just interesting to see so many things that I had experienced intuitively um, while making VR and a lot of other work like laid out in this way was really helpful. Making a video? The book's on my head. Uh huh. One way this difference between word type thinking and picture type thinking is uh, explained in the book is via the phenomenon of refraction, where light refracts and the object appears to bend toward the surface of the water. Um, he uses the refraction metaphor to talk about the translation between text and image type thinking, and right here he says, consider then this interplay between visual and verbal mediums we've been performing as a kind of refraction that simply serves to expand our view by revealing boundaries enacted by a single mode. And that got me thinking about this, which is the teeny tiny book that I wrote uh, when I was in grad school. One of the reasons um, that unflattening got me thinking about this was I tried really hard in this book to actually oops, sorry I tried really hard in this book to do something that the comics I feel like do much better which was juxtapose um, images with text and using that juxtaposition to create a sort of knowledge between the two sets um, anyways 
I wanted to read you this thing. Truth and beauty should become partners, each holding their own factual evolution. Veins of parallel convergent evolution of ideas in art and science arrive at similar con conclusions, commingling their efforts. Such a partnership could leave behind the hierarchy of knowledge enforced by perceived value. Removing the hierarchy makes more tools available. More tools means our story is written more vividly and with greater accuracy. This thesis titled uh, Un Unseen Worlds was a lot about uh, maps and the assumptions of maps affecting um, things that we can see. Going back and reading the thesis has been really interesting because um, it's there are a few kernel ideas in there that I still agree with, but a lot of the writing is just about um, sort of sticking up for art and sticking up for scientific art um, and I guess sticking up for the way I was making things at the time. Um, but the part that's actually interesting to me now was, you know, this book definitely points towards things that I'm so interested in now, which is how the artwork and the research are sort of inseparable. There's a quote in, there's a quote in here which I found um, really lovely uh, by Nelson Goodman, uh, who wrote The Ways of World Making, about how to build uh, fictional worlds, essentially. Um, worlds are as much made as found as knowing is as much remaking as reporting, discovering scientific laws involves drafting them. Recognizing patterns is very much a matter of inventing and imposing them. Comprehension and creation go together. And then I added, comprehension and creation are cyclical and inseparable. Um, and it's just, it was funny to reread that um, now that I'm doing are inside of this research context um, and feeling like yeah the making and the knowing have become uh, the make the making and the knowing are 